but HDR, high dynamic range, where instead of shooting one picture, where we're shooting a series of, of photographs, you know, in alignment, working with a, on a tripod, so you'll have some exposures that are very dark to capture good highlight detail, and then a series up to ones that are very light to capture good shadow detail, and then via software, we're melding those together. You know, a common question is how many, how many exposures should I make? And the answer, like so many things in life, is it depends. It depends on the contrast of the scene. Sometimes three exposures may be enough. Now, in the book that resulted from our, our several trips down the New Orleans to photograph, um, there are actually all between six and 16 bracketed exposures that are used to meld together. So HDR, when down to New Orleans, I thought if there's any place where HDR can really spread its wings, it's going to be in, in these dark and contrast interiors. We'd seen the cliche photographs of the damage the ex on the exteriors. We'd seen the piles of debris. But I felt there was a more personal, intimate story to be had inside. And for the first time, photography was bringing the tools to us that would enable that to be captured and to actually make that feeling of the grit, the dirt, the chaos, the destruction much more personal and much more intimate. So taking you know, a, a, a Canon 5D at that time, full frame camera and with very wide angle lenses. In fact, the lens I shot most of that work with was a 12 to 24 Sigma lens, an absolutely delightful lens. Photographed uh, those interiors during those three trips and uh, tried to drive home the destruction. And you know, one of the most rewarding responses when people see that work is when they say, I didn't know it was that bad. And that's exactly what, what I'm trying to get across to them. You know, we've, we've seen the piles of junk outside, you know, the, the ruined sofas and beds and desks and stuff, but to take them into the citizen's world. And we were very respectful. We didn't move anything. You know, we would, we would go in, the doors were open, and we were never accosted once. No one had any problem with that to photograph. And like I said, nothing. We didn't move item number one. Everything in those photographs is, is just as we found it. And there was no retouching to move things around or to remove objects. And in fact, only two out of the entire book, only two of the photographs in there are ever so slightly cropped, just a little bit when something I missed on the viewfinder, like a little distracting line on the edge. So in 2008, um, University of Texas Press, uh, they approached us. They had heard about the work and actually said, can you bring some prints down? And I went down to Austin and showed them some prints and put them out and they said, we'll have a contract on your desk in a couple of days, so, which was great. I mean, they came to us, which I wish that happened more often. <laughs> But yes, and that was the first book shot entirely with high dynamic range techniques. So it's just sort of serendipity, you know, the fact that the medium brought the right tools, the storm brought the horror, and those kind of things intersect. And I just happened to be there to grab a little bit of both and, and put the series together. Who said photography was supposed to be fun? Oh, my shirt is soaked.